Meeting halfway. Meeting halfway is the touchstone of relationships. You don't want to meet others less than halfway, like shy retreat, neglect, and so forth, or meet them more than halfway by doing too much, compromising your dignity by pushing forward where unwelcome, giving unasked for advice, etc. The halfway point may shift moment by moment. A key skill in relating to others is to be, as Carol Anthony puts it, approximately, Attuned to the subtle minutia of openings and closings in the other person, ready to advance or retreat at a moment's notice. From A Guide to the Perplexed Interdimensional Traveler, available as a document or YouTube on the Zap Oracle. Uh, see the link in the card. Um, here's a section called Meeting Halfway, the Touchstone for Relationship. Relating well to others means approaching them cautiously, grounded in your inner independence. We follow the I Ching principle of meeting halfway, see hexagram 44. Meeting someone less than halfway would be, for example, any form of neglect, such as refusing to give them a fair hearing about an issue. More than halfway would be, for example, giving unasked for advice. I'm prone toward that. Proselytizing, self-important intervening, lifeguarding others, etc. That's more my tendency. So if you go to a party and see someone you're attracted to but are shy, so shy that you hide in a corner and never approach them, you have met less than halfway. <clears throat> Hitting that on them immediately would be meet, weaning way more than halfway. Even during a conversation, one needs to apply this principle of meeting halfway by keeping attuned to the moment and aware of the subtle minutia of openings and closings in the other person. With openings, we advance with closings, we retreat and yield space. When the other transgresses, invades boundaries, or comes at us with false personality, we should never go along with their misdeeds or do anything that compromises our inner dignity. We should withdraw energy from those coming at us um, with their false self. Withdrawal can mean anything from breaking eye contact, a withdrawal of energy, ending the conversation, or in some cases, going our own way for a lifetime. When we withdraw, we should do so lovingly, though, giving the other the space to come to their senses on their own. We do not, in I Ching terms, execute them in our minds, the transgressing person, in our minds, that is, which would be to view, view them as hopeless and, an, and unable to improve. This would only help to keep them imprisoned by doubt. We also don't indulge in excessive optimism that assumes they will become more conscious in this lifetime. We remain open to the possibility, but do not extend trust to the untrustworthy. We step back to allow the creative to take its zigzag course. And for both our sake and the others, we try not to carry ongoing grudges against someone. From the I Ching point of view, we are responsible not only for what we say or do to someone with whom we are connected by inner ties, but also for our thoughts, because these are communicated on the inner plane.